What's up, AFL Fantasy Freak fam? If you're new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. If you like AFL Fantasy content, make sure to subscribe. In this video, guys, I'm going to be covering what to do with Josh Dunkley. It's quite simple. I'm going to go over all the options that you should be considering going into round seven of the AFL Fantasy season. So we've had the news emerge that Josh Dunkley will be getting a shoulder reconstruction and therefore he's set to miss at least three months of footy. Must trade, have to get rid of him this week. Fortunately, he's priced super high so you have unlimited options in what you can do. The first option that I'm going to suggest is that if you have Flynn at R2, you have to be going to Gorn or Grundy. That's your priority this week. Flynn was pretty poor in the second half last week. They will look to give Mumford more games, in my opinion. He's going to be in and out of the side. And if you don't have a backup plan there, that's going to be an issue. So now's the time that you get one of those set and forget guys. I like Grundy if you don't have either of them, as he does play Gold Coast this week. And he will go huge against Burgess and Graham in the ruck. The second guy, arguably going to be the most traded in this week and a huge talking point, is Jack Zabel. So, I'd already given my thoughts in a previous video, which I will uh, link in the cards up above. But, essentially, I'm not a huge fan of Zabel for a few reasons. North are getting smashed this year. Their percentage is 46%, so as a club, you'd think they're going to change things around. I think they could look to get their captain more up the ground, potentially more through the midfield even, to get some of that leadership up around the footy. He's getting a lot of cheap possessions in the back line. And from a defensive standpoint, he's making a lot of defensive errors. His opponents are getting a lot of easy goals on him. He is averaging 133 from his last three games, but it rarely ever works out that when you chase these big scores, they continue that form. You want to get on before these big scores so you can get that edge on the rest of the pack. At the price tag, 799k now. He's too much in my opinion. There's no value there. You're paying 111 points for him. Can he maintain this for the year? It's a query for me. The role does look great, but he does also have a decent injury history, especially last year. And at that price, you want someone that's going to consistently score 110 to 120 every week. Guys like Clayton Oliver are only 40k more. Jack Steele, Grundy, these players are in the same ballpark along with guys like Tom Mitchell, for example, who's a proven fantasy pig, and you can snag him for 30k cheaper. So my stance on Jack Zabel is I'm not too hot on him as an option. I think that especially this year with cash generation being difficult at this stage, there's not many good rookies coming through. I think this is a great opportunity to go down to an underpriced premium and potentially bank yourself an extra 100k to go towards another upgrade in the coming weeks. Therefore, some of the options that I do tend to like a bit more, I'm quite hot on steel side bottom. So last week went big, 130 points, but with the lack of midfield depth that Colling would have, we saw him injected into the midfield. He spent 88% at CBAs. So that's an increase of 46% on his season average. He's now priced 115k below his starting price, which puts him priced at 100. I expect him to continue in this role. He was playing a lot up forward to start the year, but with a limited preseason, 
He's now fit. He's now got some games under his belt, and he's going to have to go into the engine room if Collingwood are to compete in games. I think now's the time. He's bottomed out. Get on board. He's one of my top priority picks as a Dunkley replacement. We also have Nat Fife. So going to a Nat Fife saves you a roughly 130k. I like Fife as an option because... He's shown that in the past he can average 105. He does have decent injury history, which is a slight concern. But with Chera out, we saw him spend 95% at CBAs last week. I expect him to go into the middle and stay in the middle over the next few rounds. And long term, I can see him averaging close to that 105 mark this year. So while he is priced at high 90s, I still think that he is a decent option just because you're banking that extra cash which can go a long way to helping you get an upgrade and I don't think he's going to be too far behind what Azebel would produce. Sticking with the forwards, Dane Zorko also intrigues me. No Lockie Neal now, so there's going to be a big hole in that midfield and we could potentially see Zorko fill this role. I expect... Hugh McCluggage might get a slight bump. Dev Robertson might get a slight bump. We could see Berry go in there um, if he's to come back this week. But Zorko's a guy that's averaged 105, 110 in the past while playing more through the middle. If he is to get that bump, he definitely could be one that increases his output. And if you're looking for a forward this week, it could be worth just taking that risk and assuming he's going to get that. Personally, you'd like to wait and see around, which is similar to another guy that I'm going to mention in a second, but you could just take that risk straight up, get on board early and try and break the trend before other people identify this role and get on board also. At a cheaper price, I really like Shy Bolton. So last week, I advised that Shy Bolton was a good pickup. He's gone up significantly in price this week, but he's still under 600k. He's currently priced at 83, and with no Dusty this week, and potentially for a couple games, it looks like Dusty does have an ankle or foot concern as well. So Richmond could look to try and get him back to his best and use this one week off to potentially extend that to two, three, uh, and make sure he gets himself right. Shy Bolton, he's being used through the middle again. We saw last year that he's capable of averaging 90 to 95 in this role. And he's gone back to back hundreds with a big 122 last week. He's still cheap. He's priced at 83. I think that you can grab 200k here, 240k here, which can get you another upgrade somewhere else. I think it is certainly a play you can look at. Lockie Hunter for the Bulldogs is also interesting as we could see a role change here. He has been played forward this year, which has really hurt his scoring potential. But with Dunkley out, there's a potential that we could see Bailey Smith go into the centre bounces, which opens that wing role back up. We know what Lockie Hunter can score like when he is out on the wing, and especially in a Bulldogs team that's flourishing, they're scoring a stack of points. If he can get that wing roll back, he's a perfect selection at the price. He's right for the picking. He's got plenty of upside if he does get that roll. The last forward option that I want to touch on is one that I don't think is a great pick, one that I wouldn't be going with, and that's Josh Kelly. It's quite clear at this point that Leon Cameron is intent on playing him up forward. I don't think there's much that will change to the GWS side that will see him get back up into a midfield role. They're quite set with their midfielders. They have Taranto, Ward, Green, Hopper. They look like they want to play these real inside mids in that position and use Kelly more on the outside, half forward flank to try and put some score on the board and use that outside ability that he has. 
because of this role he's got, his scoring isn't there and his scoring isn't going to change until he gets the role switch. So it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Keep an eye on him going forward. Potentially a Whitfield into the side this week might change the dynamic around a little bit. But I wouldn't be jumping on at this current stage. As for midfielders, look, you can approach this in many different ways. You can go to an Uber premium, such as a Merritt or a McRae, for example. Clayton Oliver is a good one, especially with North Melbourne as his matchup this week. Like I said earlier with Jack Zebel, I don't like paying for these full-priced guys, and with the limited cash generation, I'd prefer to chase someone that's slightly more underpriced. Some of the guys that I do like, Tom Mitchell is still prime for the picking. He's priced at 106, but we all know that he can be potentially 10 points better or more. He hasn't gone bang yet, but he will sometime soon. So he's prime to get on now and hope that he goes big this week against St Kilda, who are struggling for form and have played poorly the last few weeks. Sticking with the underpriced theme, I do like Adam Trelaw. He's slightly increased in price from where he was at one or two weeks ago, but he still fits that underpriced bracket. Especially now with Dunkley out, he's probably going to spend less time at half forward, more time in the midfield. He's getting used to the systems there, he's getting used to the structures, and he's only going to get better as he hits full fitness. He's going to average over 112 for the rest of the year, in my opinion. Now's a great time to get on board, and I'd probably chase him over a Merritt, over a McRae, and save that extra 100k. Even cheaper than that, we have Darcy Parrish. So he went big last week. I think with Darcy, he's definitely not a must-have, and because of that huge price jump, it definitely makes it less of an option this week. He's priced at 94, so there's upside there. He should continue to score over 100, but he's probably not a keeper. I'd be looking to target some of these other guys, I think, unless you really need the cash, then I think he's an option. And same thing goes for Andy Brayshaw. So Brayshaw's proven this year that he has the ability, he can score well, but he's also the number one tag target week in, week out. Teams that think they have a chance against Frio are going to want to limit his impact. He's shown that when he does get tagged, his scoring is quite poor. So he's one that definitely has upside on his current price, but he does have risk with it too. So it's just something that you have to weigh up and consider. I think he's an option, but I'd probably have him lower down the pecking order. These are the guys that I would consider as a Dunkley replacement this week, guys. I think Dustin Martin, the same thing applies. You probably want to trade him. Whilst it is concussion, he could potentially miss some other games too, as he does have the foot concern. He doesn't look to be a top six forward, so get off board now and same thing applies. Go to one of the options that I've mentioned in this video. The last thing that you want to be considering with the guys that you do look to bring in is buys. So the buys are just around the corner. If you want to see me drop a video on buy structure, on planning for the buys, leave this video a like, but essentially... You want to be looking at the buy rounds. Guys like Jack Zebel, for example, play in the round 12 buy, which to me is a negative. So that's just another thing that you want to consider when selecting a premium type. If you've enjoyed this video, guys, leave it a like. Get down in the comments. Let me know what your plans are, who you're looking at, and which guys you think are the best options. Subscribe to the channel for more AFL fantasy content. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in the bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quit to save my peace. I'm so after school special.